don't promise often. I'm not one to guarantee, but I can ensure you that today's show will be definitively more exciting than that 17 punt snooze a palooza between the Jets and Patriots yesterday, uh, playing the life giving CPR lightning jolt role of Marcus Jones is Darius Butler and Joe Hayden. Lots of defense. I'm here for it. Let's get it. Go, 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 go. Down four. That's a situation that we we harp on a lot, and it's um, it's just a whole lot of fun and the the emotion to be able to persevere through that, man. It's like a, a ticking time bomb, man. Once you get in the end zone, man, you just explode. Just do that. You just fire that ball, right? Yeah. Sorry it. if I hit somebody. I don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of accuracy with this thing. That's why I moved the tight end. Sorry about that. We have Darius Butler and Joe Hayden on the show to talk defense, but it was all about the offense and Travis Kelsey last night, and that's the, about the only thing the Chiefs had to apologize for as we hear Kelsey there postgame. They went into SoFi and pulled off a thrilling 30-27 to comeback win over the Chargers. Chargers Chiefs, here for it. Whenever it's on... Give me it Monday night, Thursday night with Andrew Whitworth. And I'm here signing up for that matchup any day of the week with Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes under center. How about these Travis Kelsey three touchdowns? Oh, my goodness. I mean, if you're playing fantasy, it's, it's done. Uh, it took Kansas City just one minute and 15 seconds on just five plays to go 75 yards for this game-winning score. So the Chiefs, they're now 8-2. and two. The Chiefs are now sitting atop the AFC alone, planting that flag, ready to eat that turkey on Thursday when everybody else is duking it out to kick off week 12. So, by the way, the, the impressiveness of this feat without a juju, without Hardman, without Kader, I mean, Kadarius Tony, he pops out of this game with a hamstring injury. Mahomes still threw for 329 yards, still had three touchdowns, and it wasn't just Kelsey. He was looking at and hitting Sky Moore, Justin Watson, shout out Jody Fortson. I mean, doing it, he was spreading the ball around, and he was making it work that Mahomes. I said on Friday that this campaign, all of everything that Mahomes is doing, has the makings of a signature MVP moment with all of the injuries, with some adversity, without Tyreek Hill, and the man continues to deliver. So the race for MVP certainly isn't over. You got Jalen Hurts, you got Tua, they're still right there in the conversation. But what we saw collectively in primetime matters when it comes to these awards, it just does. It was special under the bright lights at SoFi last night. And now the Chargers, who play at SoFi, they're still playing better than the Rams, <laughs> sorry. Um, they fall outside the playoff picture. They're, even Steven, right? They're at 500, five and five. They did show me something last night too, though. Marissa and I were talking, we're like, Herbert deserves a win, we just wanna win for him. And uh, it was nice to see him finally look a little healthy out there, and you saw how much better this offense looks, even when Keenan Allen is, is, is even just even just him healthy. Him back on the field is, is a game changer. So I still expect, um, a run to the playoffs out of these bolts uh, as lightning probably just struck my studio somehow here. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know. At Up and Adam Show. Great weekend. Great football. Uh, and it wasn't the only exciting finish that we got yesterday. So let's do it. Let's get into the big takeaways from earlier action on Sunday. Patriots! Oh, woof, 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 this game. The Patriots beat the Jets 10-3. It was the sleepiest game of the year until this. That means, I mean, 17 punts, no offensive touchdowns. But this highlight was awesome. It's Marcus Jones, it's 84 yards, it's a punt return touchdown. Guess how much to go? Five seconds to go in this thing. A dramatic win for the Patriots. Uh, and it made it abundantly clear that New England is a factor in the AFC playoff race. Tell me if you've heard that before for the past 20 years or so. The Pats have won three straight from three and four a month ago to six and four now they shoot up to six in the position seating uh and they're in prime position to, to make the playoffs and i i kind of think it might happen again somehow crazily I, I, and i have to address our guy LaShawn mccoy came on the show last week uh to call belichick's greatness into question he didn't come on to do that but that it happened while he was on and, uh, you know, he said that the, what the Patriots accomplished said far more about Tom Brady. And he tweeted this, so he's doubling down, saying, why I'll overreact when I said without Tom Brady, Bills look like the... I forget what the rest of the tweet is, but he's... <laughs> okay. He's doubling down on the fact that that it's more about 
Brady, that Belichick, the, you know, it's about defense. He's not an offensive-minded coach, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, and, yes, and it wasn't the sharpest day, and I love LaShawn for, for doubling down like that, and he's awesome. Um, and, and LaShawn and, and everybody can say what they want about the offense, but I think it makes what Bill Belichick is doing with this team even more impressive. They don't have a top-tier quarterback. They're put, you know, they've got quarterback drama. They don't have – any top-tier playmakers on offense. And, yes, that does go back to some decisions that he certainly is involved in, as he's involved in every minor decision made in that building. But I, I, I don't know. If you put up their offensive weapons against anyone in the league, I, I don't know. It's, it, it's not great. Like, there's about two or three teams maybe that you would take them over. They're, they're pretty much bottom of the barrel. So, objectively, they have to be bottom five from a sheer talent perspective, unfortunately. But somehow – they're manufacturing wins, and what matters more? Nothing. They held the Jets' offense to two total yards in the second half. Like, the nightmare scenario for Zach Wilson. The, like, the, the what are, we, are we still saying space in your head, rent-free? Are we still, is that cool still? Is it? Marissa says yes, so it is. Uh, awful. Awful. They have the number two defense in the league right now after letting their best player – all pro corner, J.C. Jackson, walk in free agency. I saw Mina Kimes tweet about this, that somehow they have the second pass, best pass defense, and they do not have a stud. They do not go draft a stud corner. They didn't do any of that. Uh, they created that score on special teams. On a given day, if one phase isn't great, Belichick is the guy that's finding a way to, w way to make it happen and play, and that's what great coaching is. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about debating Shady, but I know that, I know, you know, I'm, I, I would love to have Shady come on and talk about this, but, um, more than anything, I think what Belichick's done over this last year and a half with what has been average quarterback play at best only makes his case as one of the greatest head coaches of all time, even stronger. And he wasn't the only one that made a statement, guys. Uh, let's get into it. The Dallas Cowboys, oh, my gosh. They went into Minnesota and demolished the previously 8-1 and one Vikings 40-3. to three. I was hanging out with my parents. We were outside grilling. I kept coming in like, what is going on in this game? Even in the stunning loss to the Packers last week, there were a lot of positives for Dallas to take away, as you could see signs of what this offense was maybe finally going in through and coming together, and CeeDee Lamb looked so good. Um, and it did eat, it, it, I don't know, yesterday afternoon it gelled even more, and the big breakout star to talk about what is happening here today? I'm scared. Um, I'm if, if I'm the NFC East and the NFC, I'm scared of Tony Pollard because he is a legitimate star. So here's what he did. 80 yards on the ground. 109 through the air, including that, you know, I mean, come on. Including that. Two touchdowns. Look what he's done over the past month, if we can pop up this full screen. Since week eight, he's averaged 154.7 scrimmage yards per game, 7.6 yards per touch, while scoring six touchdowns, all lead the entire league over that span. Now, under the entirety of the Jerry Jones era, the Cowboys have been at their best, you guys, with what? A strong offensive line of a leaded cheese block out there that nobody can get through, and a star running back. Zeke had been that guy. But he hasn't been that guy, unfortunately, for a few years. The Cowboys haven't had a legitimate threat as a result. And, and I think Jerry Jones was almost trying to force something to happen with Zeke that was no longer happening. A big paycheck to him, a lot of endearment for his player. And, and they didn't have a, a, a consistent threat as a result. Tony Pollard wasn't pushed and championed in that way. But if he keeps playing like that, and Parsons keep play, keeps playing the way he has been playing. And, and then we're going to throw an Odell Beckham into this mix if they get that kind of a signing. With the way the NFC looks right now, why not the Cowboys to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl? And I think LaShawn McCoy would come on and say Dak Prescott, which is an interesting answer. And, why, you know, something that we're going to have to keep our eye on and talk about uh, as the season unfolds. But, Marissa, cover your ears. The Eagles don't look... Quite, uh, I still think they, they, they don't look like quite as scary, do they? Like, scary, but we're getting there. We're, but, but we're getting there. Uh, uh, yeah, you saw what they did to the Vikings, okay? The Cowboys look as good as anyone in that conference right now. Not saying they're going to win it, I think the Eagles will, but it's, it's time to stop dismissing them for the low hanging fruit, but the valid points. I, mean, I don't know if we can say. 
to stop dismissing them because Mike McCarthy makes crazy in-game decisions, and that's why we see him throwing his headset. Uh, and, and Dak, I think, I guess, does have something to prove. But I'm excited to see what they've got down the stretch. 40-3 to in Minnesota's building is no joke and no chains for Kirk Cousins. And I don't think every, I think there's no Kirk Cousins is falling down to earth take on this or like he's going to Kirk Cousins and that's going to, it is not that. Like the Cowboys are dominant and they're gelling at the right time and Tony Pollard and Parsons are two studs leading the way and Dak can do his thing. All right, so all of this, of course, because we're talking about the Cowboys, leads to Thanksgiving is going to be so fun. We cannot wait. Oh, look at the music got exciting. This schedule is a thing of beauty. Tell me if I'm wrong. At Up and Adam Show. Tell me if I'm wrong on Twitter while we still have Twitter. Do we still have Twitter today? Okay, great. I didn't check. I cannot remember a Thanksgiving with three truly meaningful games like this. The Bills' time as the home team uh, in Detroit might have come to an end, guys, but they're going to head right back to the Motor City in a few days to take on said Lions. I just leave, I, even that I like. Both teams are coming off big wins. The Bills breaking a mini slump to beat the Browns, and the Lions going into MetLife and handing the Giants their worst loss of the season. So I know it may not look like the most exciting matchup on paper, but are you worried, Brian? Brian, oh, Brian's wearing, we can, does Brian have to move over so we can see what he's wearing? Brian's wearing his Buffalo Bills dad vest. Where do you get a vest like that? It's literally from my dad. It's, <laughs> it's, it's literally from it's my dad. A double. So here's my Philadelphia Eagles and Buffalo Bills. I mean, you two might play each other in the Super Bowl. You might not be friends for that week. Uh, are you scared about the Lions? No, I think it was a good warm-up. <laughs> it was a scary the first half. The Lions have won three straight. Did you know that? Okay, I think they're a little feisty. They're a lot of fun to watch. I think there'll be a ton of points scored in this game. And that's just the appetizer, that Bills game, that he's pretending he's not afraid of. <laughs> you guys are moving around now. Uh, look at this. We get a battle for second place in the NFC East between the Giants and Cowboys. What? And who knows? Philly hitting some speed bumps. The winner may still have a shot at the division as well. And then for the nightcap, you just saw it. Patriots at Vikings. Oh, Two more teams sitting in playoff position with a ton to prove, a ton to gain by coming away with a win on that big national stage short week. This is the most exciting Thanksgiving of football I can ever imagine or think of. It's just true. Am I wrong? As far as Mar Marissa emphatically. Mm -mm. All right, I think Darius Butler wants to wants to get in on this action on this show. There he is. Darius Butler joining us. Hey, wow, a special Monday morning appearance. Yep. All smiles right here on Up and Adams. FanDuel Casino is giving thanks to their loyal customers by hosting a Refer a Friends Giving event that is happening right now. Here's how it works. Today through Saturday, any FanDuel Casino player can refer their friend by sending them a referral link. So after your friend wagers $10 or more on FanDuel Casino, you'll both get $50 bonuses and one shared entry to the Refer a Friends Giving sweepstakes for a chance to win a share of $50 thousand dollars what 10 sets of winners 10 sets of winners will receive a five thousand dollar bonus that's a lot of money uh i will be announcing me really me i'll be announcing that's what it says the first set of winners live on wednesday's show i don't know that's great all right check out the fanduel casino app for more details i like that can i do like skypes with the winners can we do like a, me showing up with a big check and balloons and the whole thing and scaring them? That would be fun. Um, we have bad champagne here. <laughs> we can pop open for them. It's great. Uh, okay, we got to get to this. We have to on one of our favorite guests. It's a short week. We usually have, have him on a Tuesday, but uh, he's got a million jobs and a million things to do. He's got two girls at home, and he's probably getting ready to baste a turkey. Please welcome in our favorite guy, Darius Butler. You're here, right? What's up? I'm here. I'm here. How we doing? How we living? Hey, I'm doing great. Got a, if you hear a little background noise, don't worry. I got a plumber here. I got my pool guy here. It's a lot going on right now. But it's, okay. it's Thanksgiving week. You talked about that slate of games we got this uh, this Thursday. So I'm excited uh, to get, you know, going on my thousand jobs this week. Darius, are you loving the media world? 
I'm enjoying it. I, I'm enjoying it. I am uh, blessed to be able to do uh, things that I actually enjoy doing, work with people I like uh, working with, you being one of them, obviously Pat and the boys, you yeah. know, Greg and Sal Paula, NFL yeah. Films, so every, I'm AB. So everybody, everything that I'm doing, I'm actually enjoying. It's not like oh, I'm dreading showing up to work for. I'm, I'm loving it. The travel is getting cold now. You yeah. see, I'm already ready for a flight I got in a few hours. It's getting cold, but... I like it, man. Week 12 is, is upon us. I'm having fun. You got to just push through, and then you'll be uh, in Arizona for the Super Bowl, I'm sure, and that'll be so fun. You're killing it exactly. everywhere. We talk every week in our meetings about just, like, every week it's, you know, more and more fun, and we've got more and more to talk about with you. So uh, we, we are thankful for you as it's Thanksgiving week for joining us every day. Um, and I need to get your thoughts on a couple of moments from week 11 that had me like... What am I looking at here? <laughs> and here's the first one. The much-talked-about Jeff Saturday running last yeah. pregame. game This is their game against the Eagles. He's doing push-ups, too. It's a lot. I know he's a player at heart, but Darius, what am I looking at here? Hey, every every coach, most of the coaches I play for, they have some sort of pregame routine. Some guys is running the stadium steps. Some guys is just jogging or walking around the field. But, this, hey, he's getting those arms right, pregame ready. Okay. Probably something he did as a player, and now he's doing it as a head coach in his second game. Uh, so that's our Coach Saturday. Hey, we love, we love Coach Saturday around those parts. What's he listening to in those earphones? Ooh, that, now that's a, better, that's a much better question. I know that Taylor Swift album just dropped <laughs> and has everybody in a frenzy right now. So I might I might bet uh, Taylor Swift. He's probably a Swifty. He's listening to Anti-Hero off Midnight. <laughs> I love it. All right, the Colts. Let's keep it going here. They were leading the Eagles all game until the final drive from Philly. Now, Jeff Saturday's uh, got these Colts playing with a passion. So I want to ask you, uh, is it working? Is it the Taylor Swift? Is it whatever? Is this a new version of the team we're going to see along the way? Yeah, it's work. I think it's working. You know, um, they came out and scored on the first drive uh, for the first time since last year, Chris Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, the playbook was very simple. You know, hand the ball to 28, try to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, we needed a passing game. We needed to open up a little more the playbook as the game went on. Uh, we weren't able to. We weren't able to get that win. There's no moral victories really in football. But they did come out and play uh, tough. They brought this 8-1 and one football team coming in, the Eagles, down to the wire. We should have won that game, honestly. Yeah. But Jalen Hurts was too good um, late in that game. Uh, but I, look, it's, it's, a, it's, a fresh, it's a breath of fresh air over there in Indy. I feel like the guys came out energized, and that's what you have to do as a head coach. You have to have your team ready to play. And I feel like it's the second game in a row, one on the road, one at home with Jeff Saturday has had these guys ready to play. So uh, I'm happy from what I've seen from the Jeff Saturday era so far. I love that. And you mentioned Jalen yeah. Hurts, and it really was the cherry on top of that Colts loss was him rushing straight through the wide Man. open middle into the end zone. That's a tough play, Kay. That's a tough play to stop. Tell me. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because you have past responsibilities as a linebacker, as a safety. And when you look at that O-line initially, it looks like a pass set. So, you okay, it's a pass. Uh -huh. You look at the guy he's supposed to be covering, and then it opens up like the Red Sea. So that's a great play design on, on the Eagles' part. And then obviously having a quarterback that can execute something like that. But that's a tough, tough play to stop um, at that point in the game. But then he starts dancing with Blue, <laughs> my, my boy Blue. What do, you, what do you make of that? I like that. Hey, Blue. Blue, hey, I don't care who the head coach is. I don't care who the quarterback is. Blue is going to show up. Every week, Blue is going to show up at Lucas Oil Stadium. He always has energy, and that's just him being himself. But then Jalen Hurts going back and forth. That was, that was a little fun. I thought we were going to come back and win that game at the yeah. end still. But uh, that was fun. I love Blue. Blue is my favorite mascot in the NFL. And he's the he works so hard and is incredible. And oh, you're right, he is everywhere you look. All right, Every, so I'm, let's I'm talk. watching the show now. You said blue is your favorite. I don't want to hear you saying any of these other guys. Okay, are your I, won't. I won't. Okay. I, I won't. I uh, won't. <laughs> Darius, it's bachelor party season apparently, and uh, it hit the Bears Falcons game. Not wouldn't have been my first choice for a bachelor party, but. Uh, <laughs> paying homage to Mike Ditka. I don't know if you saw this. I These did. are a bunch of guys. My, so this guy, Jared, saying, my brother's in Atlanta for a bachelor party. They're going to the Bears Falcons game. But like, it, it is incredible. I would say that. Uh, your thoughts. What am I seeing here? 
Hey, I like it when when the, when, when the band's on the same page. It's just guys being guys, dudes being dudes. I love that. I know my guy Zito out there in Indy. Bear down. I know he loved it too. Wish they could have got the win. I thought they should have. I thought they were going to get the win. But uh, I love it. I love the unity. I love everybody being on the same page. And I'm sure Mike Dicker loved it as well. Should have got that win, though. If you're be- oh, win. what a game. If your best friend and you said this is what I want to do for my bachelor party. Would you throw on cutoffs a la Bill Belichick and show up in a game like that? Hey, yeah. You know, you it's would? his day. Whatever, whatever he wants to do, we're all in. You know, we're doing all, this is this is nice and wholesome. Going to a football game, probably some Bible study, maybe yeah, some that's Uno. Right. That's right. You know, this is what we're doing, bachelor party. Some parties. Uno, a little candy land, shoots and ladders, the whole, the whole night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know Dak, okay, let's move on here. The Dak, Dak smoked the Vikings. Everyone gets it. It's amazing. Diddy, yeah. I, yeah oof. I have to ask, why is Dak always getting caught <laughs> doing the the most, uh, the most? That's it. Why is he always getting caught doing the most? What is this? Hey, innovative. Innovative, okay? The, the hips, it's so important. The core, the hips, fle- flexibility, hip mobility, so important for everybody on the field, especially quarterbacks. And I feel like now we may see more quarterbacks more players doing this now. This is something you remember he started off with this a few years ago and everybody kind of got on that train. So, hey, what, that, do this every game. Every pregame, do this. If it's going to lead to 43 blowouts, do this. You don't think it's a little weird that he's doing? Like, come, he, there are great hey, tweets about this. Look at this know, Look at this funny tweet I saw. Dak, oh gosh. <laughs> this is good. We love Dak, but look at this. Can we, do we have it? Oh, uh, there was a tweet that uh, we don't have. It. It's, there was a tweet that said the Dak's acting like the guy that you see going hard on the pull-up machine, who's got no idea how to work the actual machine at like a Planet Fitness. There, there were a couple good, there were a couple good tweets. But we love it. You're saying Dak, it works for you. Let's hey. let's do let's uh, keep it going. Whatever works for you. And it's not like, you know, it's not like he's recording himself. You know, he's a quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. So everything he does is going to be recorded. So whatever it takes for you to get ready for a game, it could be push-ups when you're not taking a snap or walking or running the stadiums or whatever it is. Do your thing, man, if it's going to lead to 37-point blowouts. Do push-ups. Do everything. Like, listen to your Taylor Swift. Do your crazy resistance band stuff. I love it. Uh, okay, one yeah. last one for you. We've got a game tonight. In Mexico City, incredible, it's Niners, it's Cardinals, a lot of talent there on both sides. Colt McCoy could get the start again if Kyler is still out. So which playmaker from this matchup are you keeping your eye on? I mean, how do you not keep an eye on Christian McCaffrey? I mean, that, that's the guy, you know, coming in. He, he can throw touchdowns. He can run touchdowns. He can catch them. So that's the guy. This is his, what, third or fourth game now in the system. Uh, so Kyle Shanahan, I'm sure he's been drawing up and plays on napkins at lunch. and every. I mean, get this guy involved as much as you can. Debo, Kittle, all, they, so many weapons out there. But if it was one guy I had to keep an eye on, which is an easy one, I'm going with C-Mac, baby. Christian McCaffrey. All right, you've got a plumber over there. You've gotten stuff going on with your pool. What's the plan for Thanksgiving at the Butler household? Ooh, a lot of food, a lot of football. To your point earlier, when's the last time we had good, <sighs> meaningful games on Thanksgiving? Usually we're punished to have to watch the, the, the Lions or the <laughs> Cowboys let us down. And now we actually have those teams in good games. Lions, I think, is on a three-game win streak right now. Cowboys coming off a blowout. And then the Patriots trying to find a way to get another win, too. So um, some good football, some good food. I'm going with a Cajun fried turkey. This oh, Thanksgiving wow. for the first time. So uh, that's the plan over here, Kay. A Cajun fried turkey sounds amazing. What's the one, if you could get rid of one dish on the Thanksgiving table for the rest of time, what would it be? If I can get rid of one, any type of casserole. Any type. I don't like any any casserole. I don't like a bunch of things put on. No, any type of casserole, get it out. Maybe sweet potato casserole. It may be the only one that, that squeaks by. But uh, any like type of casserole, like marshmallows get on it off it? my uh-uh. table. What's that? Those marshmallows on the sweet potato casserole. Exa- I can't, yeah. So I can't, you know, I can't do that. Anytime you add marshmallows or something, I, you know, I can't push back against marshmallows. But any any other casserole, no, I'm good. Give me my sweet potato, my greens, my yams, my macaroni and cheese. Get hungry, but ham. Woo! Can't wait. Do you eat light until like until Thursday? Like today till Thursday, will you sort of eat light because you know what's gonna happen or no? No, nah, Darius. I, I, I've been blessed. I've been ah. blessed by the gods with some great metabolism, so I can eat right now and I'll be hungry in two and a half hours. So 
It's no, it's no, it's no, it's no tapering off for me. I'm, I'm full steam ahead to Thursday. You're amazing, and I, and you need a. I know you have a flight to catch. Get on it. Good luck with the plumber and everything, and happy <laughs> Thanksgiving to the Butler family. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Thank you. We will talk to Joe Hayden in, uh, on the show in a bit. We've also got more uh, stuff that we missed throughout the, in the other games. We've got to talk about the Bengals. Oh, what up, helmet? Going around the league, hitting some games we didn't kick off the week Five with, and here, here he is. Stick together, play for each other. A win is a win is a win. Win on three, one, two, three! Win! Around the league here, there's Josh Allen, very excited. Of course, it took a village to get the Bills to Detroit, but they made it and came away with a 31-23 to win over the Browns. We're going around the league here. They moved to 7-3 and three now. It wasn't Buffalo's most dominant game. No, it wasn't one of their most com complete games, but it was significant because for the first time we saw them take some of the weight off of Josh Allen's shoulders, and they took weight off of his elbows, and they took weight off of his legs. Devin Singletary and James Cook, they put up 86 yards apiece with Singletary punching in a touchdown as well. So this marked the first time all year the Bills ran more than they threw. So that just deserves, I mean, happy Thanksgiving. That's incredible. And they got the win with Josh Allen throwing for under 200 yards, and he put up just seven yards on the ground. So Josh, obviously the most dangerous weapon, maybe in the NFL, certainly for the Bills, but getting the run game going and easing his workload is what is going to make this team more dangerous in the long run, and we know that. So congratulations for the win, Bills. You play early back in Detroit against the Lions on Thanksgiving. Oh, what a good aperitif for our uh, Thanksgiving pleasure. All right, next we got Philadelphia at Indianapolis. Let's do the wipe here. It took everything the Eagles had, but they pulled off. Man, look at this. How incredible. It's an emotional... It's so crazy. Sirianni. Uh, they escaped Indy 17-16. We just talked to Darius Butler about this. Philly, 9-1. Now, the only issue is the fumbles. They were a problem once again. But we see toughness. We see resolve that this team has. We see a crazy head coach, which is just what this team needed. Uh, and Philly ripped off 14 points in the fourth quarter. And what you're seeing here, I mean, this Jalen Hurts quarterback draw that Darius Butler just came on, he said, this is a tough play. Tough play to defend. Uh, and then the whole dancing with blue thing happens, and Indy thinks that they're going to win, and they do not. And I know you never apologize for winning this league, but these last two weeks, you have to, as, a, as an Eagles fan, be a little more... I'm not going to say nervous, but just a little less confident, a little less. We got this. We're going to the Super Bowl, um, and that's a fair. That's a fair take, and that's a. This is a good time for that to happen. I think uh, you certainly don't want to see it bleed into next Sunday. They've got SNF against the Packers, who have nothing to live for. You never want to play a team like that. Uh, App and Adam show on Twitter. Joe Hayden coming up. Let's move on to the Bengals and the Steelers. Joe Hayden will be on and curious to get his thoughts on both sides of this one, of course. But Joe Burrow, man, he's swearing. I couldn't believe it. They go into Heinz Field. They knock off the Steelers 37-30. They get their first AFC North win of the season. They get to 6-4 and four and back on the right side of the playoff picture. And it was refreshing to see this offense roll without Jamar Chase. Burrow was brilliant. Burrow threw for over 350 yards and four touchdowns, three to Samaj P. Ryan, including, oh my gosh, this one was so nice, including this one. Uh, we interviewed and sat down and got to spend some, yeah, P. Ryan! We got to hang out with T. Higgins a couple of weeks ago. He was, I was so happy to see it for him. Unstoppable. He racked up nine catches for 148 yards. And it, it's one of these things that we've talked about a lot on this show as we have our white helmet on set right here. This is my guy, uh, my co-host. I think it's important for Burrow and for this offense to show themselves and everyone that they don't need Jamar Chase to be successful. And I think everything that T. Higgins told me and everything I know about that team and organization, the way it's run, that doesn't hurt Jamar Chase's feelings. There's no worry of, oh, how's he going to feel? He's out. This one's racking up. Like, It's not like that. They are 
an unselfish offense. And that is why like wildly to their advantage in the NFL. And it's good that Jamar Chase wants them and wants Joe Burrow to lean on these other pieces even when Chase is back in the lineup. That'll be huge that he's able to develop chemistry further with other guys. This is a statement game for Burrow, for the rest of these playmakers. Um, and, and we do have, I mean, there's a positive update on Jamar, by the way, that he could be back even this weekend. And they couldn't come at a better time because you got to look at what we got cooking here. The schedule, not good. Uh, can we do, can I hear it, Conrad? I think week 12, tw Tennessee. Week 13, Kansas City. Week 14, well, I can't, I can't listen while I'm talking. <laughs> Conrad. No. Okay, here's the deal. They, it's, it's Titans next week. Uh, since he plays six teams, this is what I know, since he plays six teams, and sorry we don't have it up for you guys, uh, that are currently in playoff position over the final seven games. Think about that. The only non-playoff team that they face, the only non-playoff team in that whole stretch is Cleveland, okay? Who, we you know the craziest thing about that? Has Burrow ever beaten Cleveland? He's never beaten Cleveland in his career. And that's week 14, I'm told in my ear. You know what that means? You know, who's under center for that game if Deshaun Watson at that point. Really let that sink in, okay? So to me, this, when I'm saying it's a statement game, whatever, the, the Steelers beat them in round one of this year, you don't want to see them get swept. It's more than that. This was a game, given what I just said, and the schedule we didn't show you but told you, that the Bengals needed to have. And it was great to see it happen with this offense firing on all cylinders. Um, I wish I could swear and we could bleep it so I could be as cool as Joe Burrow, try to look as cool as Joe Burrow effortlessly looks always. Uh, but I, I do believe that this is the start of an epic run to the playoffs for this Bengals squad. All right, we're going to have Joe Hayden on. He'll, he, might, he might disagree with me about those Bengals. But until then, let's move on to Carolina at Baltimore. <laughs> all these things about this this team and then it's like oh man I don't know I think the Ravens are gonna win the Super Bowl that's how I feel about this team man they're so good they and it was a slip was it was a low scoring game it's slap whatever they have the lead in the AFC North if it's 13 to 3 it's over Baker Mayfield and, and the the whatever the Panthers who cares I don't know. And I know the offense is still trying to find itself and and they haven't been right for a while but they ripped off a fourth straight win, and this once maligned defense has been absolutely brilliant over the streak. Check this out. Look at these numbers we pulled up. The Ravens rank top five in every major defensive category since week seven, including number one in third down defense. Number one. So, yes, the offense has to figure things out. The Ravens are going to take down the AFC's elite, Bengals included. But... The good news is that they have time to get it going. And here's why I like them. This is the case I'd like to pull out here. They don't play another, this is the, the they're the anti Bengals. They don't play another team with a winning record until they face the Bengals in week 18. Are they going to win all of these? I mean, are they going to have the one seed? If this defense can keep it up and this offense can find itself, Watch out. Watch out with these Ravens is all I'm saying. All right, last up, um, Detroit. And I, I, they'll, if they do – we do we have the schedule for the Ravens? We do not have the schedule. Just trust me when I tell you it's not good until – or it's easy pickings until week 18 for them. Um, and we'll have schedules for you guys. Sorry. Okay, Detroit uh, at the New York Giants. We dominated the ground game, man. We made the throws we had to. We were efficient. That's the way to win, man. Now you're figuring it out. Yep. Now we're figuring it out. That's three. Yes, sir. Everything will be mental. And we go for four against a really good opponent. Hey, That's outstanding, gentlemen. Yeah. You earned it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who would you would you like him at your Thanksgiving table? Or like see like who you would? <laughs> We, that, that sounds like a good segment. Like, which, who would be the best guest? Like, Sirianni would stand on the table, yes. but Dan Campbell would eat the table, 
and I don't know what I want to calm. I'm trying to think. No, Andy, Andy, I would, I, you know, then I'm, then I'm fighting with elbows to try to get anything going. Andy Reid, give me some other coaches. Ron, oh, see, like Ron Rivera is a perfect guest. Like he'll come, he'll behave, he'll bring wine for my mom, he'll give her the European kisses, one, two, three, and sit down and be a. Ron Rivera is a good one. I'm trying to think of another one. Um, Brandon, I mean, yeah, Brandon Staley. Yeah, Brandon Staley would be good, but he's a little risky. Like, but you have to, you have to figure it out. Pete Carroll. Will he take the? Will he put the chewing gum on the bottom of my mom's <laughs> table? I don't know if I can do Pete Carroll. I don't know if I can handle Cliff Kingsbury will hit on my mom, so I have to, we have to, we're getting away from that. Keep naming, naming coaches as I offend them. Go ahead. Mike McCarthy is an interesting one. Okay, I could think I could do Mike McCarthy. Matt LaFleur, I feel like, is on some, like, you know, him and, him, nobody's eating. Him and, like, Sean McVay and all, they're not going to eat anything. They're going to, they're going to be gulping, you know, protein shakes or whatever it is. All right, we're going to get out of here. Uh, we've got such a fun slate of action on Thursday, but we're recapping everything. Darius Butler was on the show, and he was amazing. We were all about defense on the program. Oh, on a golf cart! Yes! We you love this retired it. life! A retired, retired king, life. Joe Hayden, next. I mean, honestly, the NFL world was just a better place when Joe Hayden was roaming the field. And he's our guest today, a two-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowler. He played 12 seasons in the NFL for the Cleveland Browns and Pittsburgh Steelers. And now, newly retired, but always superstar cornerback Joe Hayden. Hey! Hello, Don. How are you? <laughs> Joe, what golf course are you at? You retired, retired superstar. And what, what hole are you on? I am on nine at Lakeside Golf Course <laughs> in, uh, in L.A. That's my new club. I remember there having a blast. Uh, they're asking me in my ear, how's that handicap looking? Handicap. Look, I'm a 13 handicap, so it's not. I'm not too good, but I'm not the worst. Okay, I don't even know what that means, Joe. So we're going to talk football instead. Congratulations! Okay. Uh, such a, an incredible career, and and on your retirement. And I know that you've said that you know you played 12 years, and you thought about maybe L.A., maybe the Rams, maybe the Bills. And this is back before September when you made that difficult decision to walk away. Do you watch these games now and think, man, the Rams, they're not good. I could have helped them. Do you watch the Bills and say, they might go win a Super Bowl. I, sh I want to be part of that. Where are you at with your thought process? I, I'm at peace with my thought process. You know, honestly, I went to my first game, actually, besides the, the Browns games, uh, when they played the Bengals when I did my retirement. I went to the Chiefs-Chargers games yesterday at SoFi. I uh, brought my son, Travis Kelsey. He had a, a suite that's one of my really good friends. And was at the game watching, having a blast, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm, I'm kind of at peace with the fact that the physical, you know what I'm saying, like the what, what, what it took to be to play at the elite level, yeah. uh, I don't take that for granted. And right now, I'm two months uh, not working out, two months not doing too much of anything, but dropping my kids off at of school, you know what I'm saying, ha having a good time. So um, being able to have that freedom is somewhere where I'm like, dang, like I really did, I did that, you know what I'm saying, being able to really embrace it and just look back at what you did. So I, I feel good about my decision. I mean, you're all smiles. You look happy. Two months removed and you're, I mean, you clearly made the right move and we're so happy to hear yeah. that. We love when that's Thanks. the case. Uh, and you have been playing golf. I see that on your Twitter. Yeah. I, like, like I said, I don't know much about the game, but this is not what I thought that it was like. <laughs> I mean, talk about keeping the competitive juices going. So this is, you know, you. And then there's like a hip check that happens. Let's take a look at this. Oh, walk it off, throw the club. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, girl, let's go. This is, golf is one of the craziest sports because it's a little ball and a little hole. It's like I can't, I can, I should be able to hit this ball three thousand yards. And I play with seventy-year-old dudes, sixty-year-old dudes that are hitting the ball way farther than me. I'm like, there's no way you should do anything athletically better than me. There's no way. There's no way. And it's just like you got to practice repetition. And I just, I love the competitive nature that you can play so many different courses with so many different people. So now, golf is 
golf is lit. Danny Woodhead comes on our show sometimes, and he's he's really good. Like he's pro, pro golfer vibe style, oh, trying to, to qualify. Are you taking it that seriously, like you, or is it just? I mean, I I love it, mm -hmm. and I think I need this when I start. I'm going to start getting the golf coach because I can, I can only get as good as you know. Right. Like I, I don't. I need I need Tiger. I need Tiger. I need Roy. <laughs> I need Justin Thompson. I need these dudes to really give me give me some of the good stuff. Okay, yeah. Jordan Spieth was on our show a couple weeks ago. I got it. We, we'll get you his information. He's got to help you out and make it happen. What's next for you, Joe? You could do anything. Are you going to come hop on one of these tables someday soon? Oh, one, a thousand percent. Honestly, uh, I'm one, two. I'm going to hopefully meet him with like Amazon, CBS, Fox, all of the guys. Just trying to figure it out because I really want to do like the, I want to do some broadcasting. I want to do some sports commentating. I, I really enjoy the game. I want to be around it. So I think this this first season, I just doing a little fun, chilling, hanging out. But uh, definitely during like once Super Bowl happens, I'm gonna start uh, meeting with some companies and definitely want to get one 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 get into the broadcasting. That's amazing. If you had a dream job, tell me what it would be. Would it be in the just so we can manifest this thing for you? Pro golf. We, we you know you got to be a good golfer. You got to drive those kids to school every day. But then, yeah, yeah. when it comes to your future career, like, what's the position you want? Pre-game desk wanna, you want? Pre-game desk. I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on my Michael Strahan, a.k.a. Nate Burleson. Oh, people, you know I know him. Nate love Burleson? It. I love Nate. I'm supposed to be meeting with him really soon. But, like, Nate and Nate, uh, Michael Strahan, and then Andrew Hawkins, just swaggy dudes out here doing Ryan Clark. Like I'm getting, I'm getting good those vibes. I love those vibes. There is no better person to talk to than Nate Burleson, who is an absolute star and a star right. human uh, as well, which is amazing. Okay, I want to get to some other questions with you. Uh, okay, let's see. I want to. Why are we? I don't know. We're, we're jumping around here so much. Okay, um, you had six interceptions your rookie season. I know you retired as a Brown. That was important to you. It's the team that drafted you. Uh, cornerback is known as the hardest position on an NFL team to master. So how are you able to transition into the league so successfully? Looking back at it now, removed from the game. Uh, I think it was, uh, we had great, great coaching. And then just um, being able to film study, honestly. Uh, the one thing is there's so many great athletes, so many uh, great receivers, quarterbacks throwing the ball on the dime. Uh, but if you can get that film study and you can kind of understand tendencies and know what's going to happen before it happens, that's that changes the game. It makes it move a whole lot slower. Um, so I think when I started coming, as soon as I got in there, I was with Sheldon Brown and Eric Wright. Yeah. Those dudes taught me studying third down is going to get you paid. And that was like the main thing. Third third and shorts, you know that they're going to run stick routes. You, you're, you're anticipating stuff, so you're kind of baiting people. So once you get to that point, it's the game just changes totally. Joe, who reminds you of you? Because there's a few rookie corners having a mate, like Saws Gardner, Tariq mm. Woolen for the Seahawks, stud, unexpected. Any corner remind you of you? Uh, I really like, um, well, for, he's more of a slot guy. Well, Kenny Moore, but my, my favorite, Darius Slay, Killing is it. amazing. Killing it. I, I think the, the new one coming, man, is Sertan from, uh, from the Broncos. He is unbelievable. He certainly is, and, and that's a high praise for them coming from Joe Hayden. I want to get yeah. your take on the Jets. I know you got – I mean, I'm not, your, your arm's going to get tired from all this holding of, of the phone. Oh, no, 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 no. We're good. It's posted. Uh, so the, I want to get your take on this. The, after losing to the Patriots, the Jets lose, and they score only three points. Zach Wilson was asked if he let his defense down, and he responded no. So this is your spot. You want that stray hand, Nate Burleson vibe? This is the kind of stuff they got to talk about. As a defensive player, how would you respond to that? As a defensive player, this is what it is. Um, you want to feel like you – that's – he shouldn't have said that. At the end of the day, if you're a quarterback, you're a franchise guy, you know that's not – that's not – that's not – but that's not the standard. That's not the standard. You got to be able to go out there and, and hold your end down too because – like everybody's getting, everybody has a job to do. The defensive guys are out there holding it down. Like they're not not allowing any points. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you're a quarterback of a franchise like that, you got to be able to go out there and stand up and and be accountable for when you don't do your job. What do you think he should have said? I think he should have said, uh, if I was like, look, look here, guys. Uh, end of the day, I did not hold up my end of the bargain. We have to do better. We got to be able to put our defense in better positions. My job as a quarterback is to put points on the board, and uh, we didn't do that. And I'll do a better mm. job next week for sure. Mm. And just 
put put it put a little bit of accountability on yourself and just make sure, like, you know, end of the day, you are the quarterback. Joe. And with, with yes. Joe, is he losing the locker room over this? Um, I I don't think you could lose. I, I mean, I, you could. Yes, honestly. Honestly, not to, just not to, I don't want to knock, knock the kid, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to stand in your own tent. You're in there with grown men, and you have a job to do. And when you don't do it, just hold yourself accountable, and then people will look at you in a whole different different light. Yeah. So I, I just think that he, he did, didn't go about it right. Now. He needs to get in there and make that right right away, I think, this morning, if he hasn't already. Uh, last one for you. You finished your career in Pittsburgh. Uh, there's some golf cart, beer cart girls running by. Uh, it's not, listen, it's not looking good for those Steelers. It's not looking good for the playoff chances. But from what you've seen from this team, is there anything that you can point to that makes you think that there's a chance they can make a run to finish the season because they'd basically have to run the table? Uh, TJ Watt. <laughs> TJ Watt is back. Um, the defense, I mean, I think that defense, we have just a lot, a lot of playmakers on the defense side of the ball. Uh, we can get Najee Harris back toting the thing right. Um, just... I think if our defense can continue to make plays and we can start doing sacks and get a whole bunch of turnovers, I think that that would be the key way. And then if Najee can continue to, to tote the ball in our, our line for block um, and, and get him, give them big holes, I think he'll be good. They're 3-7. and seven. They're tied with the Browns at 3-7 and seven at the bottom. Who do you have more faith in, them or the Browns? Because they do get Deshaun Watson back. Oh, I would say right now I have to say the Steelers just because I believe in Coach Tom. I don't think Coach Tom he has had a losing record in his career. I think this one will be tough. That you know what I'm saying, finish the season with a winning one. But yeah. I just believe in the coaching staff. I believe in TJ and those the, the defensive guys there. Uh, hopefully the Browns definitely can turn around when Deshaun Watson gets there. It's going to be a completely different animal. But uh, I, I just I just with, with Coach T right now. I just I just think that they might be able to turn around. And I love hearing you say that, Joe Hayden. Come back anytime. Don't forget us when you're oh. big and famous, more famous than you already are. But thank you. No. No, listen, I'm coming back for sure to your spot. Thank you. You're the one to put me on. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even hear him anymore. We love you. Niners, Cardinals in Mexico City tonight. Enjoy that game. We'll have a follow. Maybe we should call Stats and get his thoughts on that one. But uh, as part of the international series, big thanks to Joe Hayden. Congrats on his retirement. And his, his handicap is good? Okay, I don't know. So, solid handicap. Great. And Darius Butler, uh, it is Thanksgiving week here on the show. Enjoy your day. And uh, go Team USA.